so top of the league, early early days, but top of the league, cup run. It's been a good start to the season. Yeah, it has. It's um, it's been positive. Played some excellent football. Um, dug deep when we needed to, and the boys have you know got the rewards with some very good wins. The last win, kind of the manner of the scoring in the game, if you just looked at it like I did, not knowing about the performance, what was happening in the game, you looked at it as like, oh, it's a bit of a cup hangover. And then obviously you come back and score two late goals, you win the game. There isn't a cup hangover. Um, but you must be pleased to have your team so focused. There was no kind of element of dwelling on the shootout. Yeah, I was glad really, because it's easy for me to say, um, and you always get your, your cynics. Um, when I said before the game, I won't allow him to have a cup hangover because I was confident. I was confident how, how the players would respond, how they would be. And um, I think the first half performance was, was unbelievable, apart from you know one or two things in the final third. But we, we were excellent. OK, they came out um, and they were a the better team for 25 minutes when they took the lead. I've got no problem with praising that opposition. Um, but the way we finished the game was, was excellent and it, it showed... Uh, a togetherness from the group to to dig deep when they need to. It's very early days, obviously, in the season. But do you look at League Two this year and go, it's quite it's quite wide open. There's maybe no teams you look at and go, well, they're definitely definitely going to be up there, or they're definitely going to be down there. Um, no, I, listen, you you start trying to predict that you always come unstuck. It's always one or two teams that surprise you. You know, you you look at it, the big spenders, Salford, Mansfield. Bolton, um, Forest Green to an extent, you know, you've got teams that, that you know, seem to be having a go in that regard. But, you know, we, um, we've just got to stick to, to what we do. Um, just because you've got a bigger checkbook doesn't mean, doesn't guarantee success. And just because you've got a smaller one doesn't guarantee failure. So, you know, it works both ways. And, you know, we're, we're pleased with the start we've had. Um, but it's a long road to go. Starting at the weekend, tough trip and tough, tough team. Yeah, listen, they um, they are a good team. You know, I know we've played them once uh, at our place and we we put on an unbelievable performance. But it'll be a different game again Saturday. Um, you know, they'll bring one or two back in, and they'll be looking to to keep up their their good form. How are you looking both, well, first of all, in terms of fitness? I know you don't tend to give us specifics, but are you looking, looking okay? It's been a, quite a frenetic start to the season. All I say is the injuries we, we have had have been like bad ones. They're, you know, they're more long-term, as in you know, over six weeks. Um, and it's been very, very frustrating to take. Um, you know, we just gotta, we got to keep going. Well done. Obviously, we, we miss Brandon and Lewis Collins from the squad this weekend. So, um, somebody's got a chance to step in. Obviously, Brandon away with the under-21s. Um, how's he been after the penalty shootout? Because, obviously, it could happen to anyone, but it's a, it's obviously perhaps more tricky for you to deal with when it's a, a very young player. He's fine. He's mature beyond his years. Um, like I said, I rang him. Uh, when I when I got home after the game, make sure he was okay, as I did with Ryan Taylor. Um, well, they're fine. You know, they come back in the next day. They were, you know, they were the same. They were just getting on with their business and looking to do well in the following game. And that's that's all you can ask of them. And I'd like to ask you one, if I may, about Kevin Ellison. Obviously, we've just had a long chat with him for Mental Health Day uh, Awareness Day, which is tomorrow. Uh, he's been very open about his issues. We were saying there's not, especially in the current climate, he looks like the most unlikely signing in the world because obviously everyone's trimming back. You've gone out and signed a 41-year-old, but I, I said to him, you probably signed him for more than just what he brings on the field. Kind of talk to me about what he brings to the club as a whole and, and why you wanted to, um, to get him in. I think it's massively important, first and foremost, that he could still do a job on the pitch. He can. Um, he's very fit. You know, he's in great shape. He's always looked after himself. I've known him a long time. 
Um, but off the pitch, he can advise, give advice to the the younger lads. He's already thrown himself into the into the club um, by being um, in with a mental health um, patron, whatever you want to call him. Um, he's, he's taken that title, which I think is massively important. Um, and he'll he'll be good. He wants to do some coaching with the academy young lads as well. And look, it's, um, it's he's a breath of fresh air. He's you know he's somebody who is just loving living his uh, occupation and give, trying to give back as well. So that's that's hugely important. And just, sorry, one final one. We, we come up to deadline day for AFL clubs on Friday. I just wonder if there's any possibility of any more business with County and how happy you are with your, with your squad as it is today. I'm hoping so. I still think we need two more players. Um, whether I can do two is a different story. Um, I was very close to one last couple of days but um, just have to be patient on that. and is it a case of obviously tell me no uh, no comment if you don't want to answer is it a case of you have the resources to bring two players in or you have to do a bit of chopping and changing with the squad and maybe someone leaves to to get more in it all depends how much the two players cost um that's not me being you know sarcastic or or flippant it's um there's just a small bit left um and if the two players come up available for the right price, I might be lucky and be able to get two. Otherwise, I'm maybe going to have to wheel and deal with one. And generally speaking, happy manager, because you see, obviously, you've had a very good start to the season. The squad seems full of goals. You were already a very good defensive side last year. Seems to be a really nice blend, but I guess your job as a manager is to always want extra and more. Yeah. So I'll never... I'll never be um, happy just sat there um, tapping yourselves on the back or thinking everything's great because that's when things go pear-shaped. Um, I'll keep on going every day. I don't care if we've won 10 in a row or lost 10 in a row. You know, I won't change. I'll be, I'll be on them. I'll be demanding that standards are continually driven throughout the football club. Um, and they keep improving themselves, not just on the pitch, but off the pitch. Top man, thank you very much and best of luck tomorrow. Mike, never mind about bringing two more in. Don't let Josh Sheehan go. Has all that died down? Well, yeah, at the minute there's nothing being said um, and that's good. Yeah, we won't. Okay, we won't write about it then. That's, but that, that's the key thing is holding on to what you got as well, isn't it? Yeah, so it'll be interesting, one or two of them. Um, nothing at the minute. Yeah. Or nothing concrete. So, um, yeah, it's good. Like, good. I don't want to, there's, there's players I don't want leaving, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, the other you don't seem to need at the moment is uh, any strikers. I mean, your rotation of your front men seems to be working very well. Yeah. They, they know that they've got to perform. Um, you know, once, I, I think I've shown already, once they start hitting form and forming a partnership, then it's down to them to to lose their place, if you know what I mean. The others have got to work extra hard to get in and they've got to bring the qualities to the team that we're looking for. Um, you know, it's um, We've changed it around. We've played different partnerships and it just gives other teams something to think about as well. So, you know, in the past where we've just been predominantly relying on Podge and Jamil, um, we're in a better position um, yeah. in a better situation uh, so far. And the other thing is you could bring someone off the bench and it's it's a slightly different style of threat or it's a, a consistent threat, if you know what I mean. Yeah, you know, we, we've got to we've got to cover all bases. Um and look, it's it's something for, for us to get the blend right, you know, who partners who. Um Tristan is obviously doing well at the minute with his goal return. Um but we've had a lot of games in, in a short space of time and yeah. you've got to make sure that they're fully fresh as well. Yeah. Goals was probably something you were a bit short of last year. And uh, do you think you're getting the return you need now? I still think we should be scoring more. Um, yeah. Chances we've created. But yeah, it's a it's a healthier start. And yeah. the pleasing thing is we're looking like scoring. You know, there was times yeah. last season where, you know, we, we were just relying on maybe a set piece or a moment of magic. And, you know, it, that that already takes the, the percentages down on your ability to score more goals. Yeah. 
and the style that we're all talking about and all loving watching is uh, seems to be evolving and everyone looks so very confident on the ball. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, we've been able to tweak a few things. Um, like I said, we've had meetings with staff. I've called, you know, me and Wayne spent hours going over things, different patterns of play, etc. We delivered a presentation to the players, first day of pre-season. And we've recruited players who are more comfortable with the football at their feet. So, um, yeah, and that's nothing against you know, people who have moved on or, or you know, not, no longer here. Because we've done that before. We've had Regan in, we've had Ben White in. Those players are very comfortable with the football. But, you know, overall now we're in a position where you know, we've, we've made it clear that we can play. Yeah. And uh, Cambridge, is a, it's a long trip, but it's a tough place to go to. Yeah, it is. Listen, they're, they're doing really well. Um, obviously, Mark has just won Manager of the Month. Um, so, congratulations to Mark. Um, it's um, it's going to be a tough game. You know, they've got yeah. some very good players. I think they've recruited well. Um, and we've got to be on, on our game. If we're not, we'll come away with no points. Yeah. Sorry, just coming back to, to Kevin Allison. Um, he, great to see him play 90 minutes. But him talking about some of the difficulties he had... Did you ever have tough times as a footballer, mentally? Yeah, of course I did. You know, I had a, a very, quite a lot of tough times. You know, it's not just the injury part. You know, I, one season I lost, I lost my great auntie who brought me up. Um, ten months later, I lost my mother. I'm living away. My dad then was had a heart attack and a stroke in you know quick succession. Um, and at that time, there's a million th- thoughts going through your head. You know, you want to get back home. You want to, you want to be around your family because you feel that you're not helping them out. Yeah, I've had a lot of bad times. So, were you able to open up to anyone about that? Was there anywhere to go, or was it a sign of weakness if you did that then? No, I don't. I've got no problem with um, speaking to people. Um, but I'm quite. Um, I'm a realist. I'll. Um, I mean, there's no point worrying about things you can't change. It's a it's a big thing for me. Yeah. Um, you know, it's um it's just a sad time and you know, I, I think when you face challenges like that in life, um, it can make you stronger, as in more resilient and more determined to you know, to do them people proud, which yeah. you know, I'm I'm trying to do. So if you and Kevin have come through an era where it was just starting to maybe be acceptable for people to show their feelings uh, as footballers or whatever, as opposed to maybe 40 years ago when perhaps it, they kept it a bit more locked up. How does it transfer to the youngsters now? And having someone like Kevin in the dressing room will be a great example. And do you think that can help as football goes f- further forward? Yeah, it can help the other way as well, where it can toughen them up as well, because they're seeing the amount of hard work that this uh, 41-year-old is putting in to maintain his physical condition, um, and it, it can show them what's what's required, what's needed yeah. to, to be a professional footballer. Because a lot of the younger younger players come through; they've had everything given to them on a plate, nice academies, nice travel, um, nice training pitches, everything. Um, it's not something that we've always had, and sometimes that can get taken for granted. And <clears throat> you know when. When things are going wrong and they get told they've had a bad performance, you know you you need to um, you need to take that on board and not as a criticism, but as as a mechanism to 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 drive you on and, and improve. Um, you know, obviously, when people do suffer away from away from the, um, the training ground and away from football, at least they know then there's people who have been through the same situation and. And they can ask their advice on it if if they yeah. wish to, of course. Yeah. What sort of system do you have at the club then uh, to deal with an illness, if you like, that's not injury related? So we've got you know people um, in, in the offices that can be approached and, and spoken to, and then they'll be put in the right direction. Um, the players know that it's anything that they're struggling with that they can come and speak to me. Um, no, no further. It will be confidential unless they want me to maybe call somebody or you know give them a phone number or something to to put yeah. them in the, you know in the right direction. Um, 
sometimes sharing a story that I've been through with them or somebody else has been through um, can help that. And I think it is about, like you said, the stigma now of, of talking about it is, is rapidly going. And um, yeah. the more you can talk about something, then hopefully it, it, the more it can help somebody. But you're all perceived as supermen, aren't you? You're the uh, epitome of, of manhood on the pitch. You're representing your area. You can't have any faults. You can't be suffering, surely. Well, I don't. Uh, I don't get involved with the the macho stuff. Um, you know, I I just take every day as it as it comes. Um, try and improve. Try and do better than I did the day before. Um, and you know, people people think you're there to be shot at. Um, one minute you're hero, one minute you're you're zero. Um, but people need to have a a bit of um, bit of common courtesy of their thought process um, when players or managers or officials are getting you know hammered on social media um, you know, racist racist racially abused you know it's it's disgusting um, and it doesn't give them any right where you can just hide behind the screen and, and say what you want because that, at the end of the day that's that says more about the person that's writing it because I, I think they're cowards mm. Uh, finally, I just how does it make you feel when you see someone who's a year older than you doing so much and you can't do it anymore? It's two years older. Than me and I two years older, is it? Yeah. Yeah, I, I've told him. I I still tie him up in knots in training. <laughs> <laughs> Great, thanks, Colin. Cheers, thank you. Shut up.